hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at the Serverside.com, and I wanted to help you answer 10 of the toughest Jenkins interview questions you might encounter. Question number one, what are the software prerequisites for installing Jenkins? The answer to that question is the JDK. The only thing you need to run Jenkins is the JDK. Since version 254, I believe it is the JDK version 1.8 or newer, but fundamentally, the only thing you need in order to run Jenkins is the JDK. Now, Jenkins is web-based, is a web-based interface. So there is sort of a requirement for a servlet engine. Uh, so if you want to take the, the Jenkins war file and deploy it, you need a Tomcat server or a Wildflower server. But the war file that you can download from Jenkins actually has the Jetty server embedded inside of it. So really, if you're just using the Jenkins war file, you don't even need a, a pre-existing servlet engine because that's already embedded inside of the, the Jenkins distribution package. So fundamentally, the only thing you need is the JDK, uh, but a servlet engine certainly helps you along the way. Question number two, what is the syntax Jenkins uses to schedule items? Well, Jenkins uses a cron job syntax. That is four stars, four asterisks. Uh, or sorry, five asterisks, um, with each asterisk separated by a space, and those stars, asterisks, can be replaced by a number. And depending on the order, I think, what is it? The first star represents the number of minutes, the second is the hours, the third the day of the month, the fourth the month itself, and the fifth the day of the week. So for example, if you wanted to schedule something to run at 5.30 every Friday, you would use a cron job syntax that looks something like 30 space 17 space star space star space 4 and that would end up running every Friday at 5.30. So name a Jenkins environment var variable you may have used. Well there's a whole bunch of Jenkins environment variables that are available to your script jobs. Some items such as job name, node name, workspace, build URL, job URL, those are all valid environment variables that you'll see inside of your Jenkins job. So i just be familiar with some of those and, and maybe exactly what they do and that'll get you through question number three. Question number four, name the various security mechanisms that Jenkins uses. Jenkins has a couple of options for authenticating users. Uh, the first is an internal database which it sets up automatically right when you install it. The second is authentication against an LDAP server. So there's an LDAP server configuration page inside of Jenkins. And finally, if you deploy your Jenkins war file to a Tomcat server or a WebSphere application server, and that server is already configured with an authentication mechanism, maybe that goes to LDAP or it even uses a custom user registry, Jenkins can piggyback off that configuration as well. Question number five, describe the standard process to configure and use third-party tools within Jenkins. In general, this is the, the process that you would follow if you wanted to use a third-party tool such as Node.js or SonarCube or something along those lines. So first of all, you install the tools. So if you want to use SonarCube, you have to have it installed somewhere. If you want to use Maven, you have to have it installed somewhere. So make sure the product is installed. Step number two, download the plugin. So find the SonarCube plugin, find the Node.js plugin, but download the plugin inside of Jenkins. The third step is then configuring the tool. So inside Jenkins, there is a, an option to configure third-party tools. Um, I think it's just under Manage Jenkins Configure Tools. And if you've installed the tool and installed the plugin, you usually go into that area and point the tool to where it's installed or maybe the URL that you'll connect to in order to access that resource. With some plugins like the SonarCube plugin you actually do it in the system configuration option but basically you have to tell Jenkins where that tool is can be found where it's installed. After that uh, you then go in and you go into your build jobs and you actually use the plugin maybe a checkbox or a drop down option will appear in your build jobs um, but you can then start using those plugins. Now uh, now there's uh, some exceptions to that so for example if you're using check style or PMD uh, and you're doing a Maven build Maven can automatically download those products so you don't have to go in and do that configuration step but overall the four steps are 
download the product and install it, add the plugin for that particular product, configure that product as a tool inside of Jenkins if that's necessary, and then finally just use it in your builds. Those are those four steps in order to use a third-party tool with Jenkins. Question number six, name two ways a Jenkins node agent can be configured to communicate back with the Jenkins server. One option is just to go to the node machine, launch a browser, and then launch the Jenkins node agent from a browser using JNLP. The other option is to actually just go in and use the command line. So you can do, you can download the agent.jar file and you can do a little java-jar agent.jar command and specify the JNLP URL for the master server. But those are the two ways to configure a node agent to link back to the master. Launch it from a browser window or use the command line interface. Question number seven, how do you take a backup of your Jenkins build jobs in order to prepare for disaster recovery? And maybe that's not just disaster recovery, but you might want it just a history of your jobs and how they've changed. Uh, in order to do that, all you have to do is go into the jobs folder in Jenkins home, copy that jobs folder. And when you copy that jobs folder, you'll have the configuration for all of the build jobs that are configured inside of your environment. So it's that jobs folder, copy it, back it up from time to time. Not a bad idea to maybe even check that into source code repository. Now, the only other thing I would mention is that jobs folder also keeps a history of the jobs that have run. And you may not want to back that up. Uh, I mean, you might. It's not a bad idea to have a history of all your Jenkins jobs. Uh, but if you're purely looking at configuration, you just want the XML files in the jobs directory under the folders whose names map to the various Jenkins jobs that you have, you may not want the whole history of the jobs because that's really external to the configuration. But the answer to that question is you back up that jobs folder in the Jenkins home directory. Question eight, name three steps or stages a typical Jenkins pipeline might include. A typical Jenkins pipeline would probably include build, test, and then deploy. And so that's, you know, a fairly easy to uh, use Maven to build the project, run your project through a variety of bug tests, static code analysis, maybe some performance testing, and then finally deploy it maybe to a Tomcat server, maybe to a Docker container, maybe even to a Nexus Maven repository. And of course, you can even break that down further. So, you know, there might be environment validation, there might be user acceptance testing, there might be uh, deployment to... Uh, alternate server, so you might go to Nexus repository first, and then after that, go to a Tomcat server. And so there's a variety of different things that you can include in a pipeline, but three, build, test, and deploy. That's probably the most important ones. Question nine, how can you temporarily turn off Jenkins security if there is a problem with the administrators locking themselves out? Uh, well, that's uh, fairly easy to do. Just go in and find the config.xml file under your Jenkins home directory. Open that up with Notepad and you'll find a setting called Use Security. If you set that to false, security gets turned off and then you can log in in an unauthenticated manner. Of course, don't do that too often. <laughs> don't lock yourself out. Uh, more importantly, if you do have to use that little trick, make sure you turn security back on after you've fixed your security problems. And question number 10, uh, polling a Git repository for new commits is considered an anti-pattern. Uh, what is a better alternative to polling your repository? Uh, yeah, we don't like to constantly be polling the source code repository and saying, hey, is there a new commit? Is there a new commit? Is there a new commit? Uh, it's uh, just a, a waste of resources. I mean, it's as simple as that. So a better option to doing that is instead of having Jenkins poll the source code repository, what you do is you install something called a post commit hook on your source code repository and your Git server, or your GitHub installation. And anytime a commit happens to a branch that you're interested in building, that particular commit, after it's done, it then triggers the Jenkins build, probably by uh, invoking the build URL and triggering the build that way. But yeah, that's a, an anti-pattern. We don't like to constantly pull our source code repositories. Instead, have the source code repository kick off the build when uh, a new commit has happened to that particular branch. And there you go. Those are 10 top
Hoff Jenkins interview questions, make sure you can put those answers into your own words. If you disagree with some of my answers, uh, make sure you know why you disagree and you can articulate that. And if you can do, I have no doubt that you'll land that new important Jenkins DevOps job.